Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! Oh man, I'm super excited because you have double the fun for this episode. Uh, from across the pond, by the pond, I mean a giant ocean called the Atlantic that I've never swam. Uh, we have we have Becky and Josh. How are you doing, Becky and Josh? Hi, Dr. Tom. It's great to see you. Hi, Dr. Tom. I'm great, thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thanks for asking. You know, it's kind of funny. I, I have to swing by my place uh, to pick some things up. It, it's a great pad. It used to be owned by a nice lady named Lily. <laughs> Ah, okay. Uh, so you guys are from Black Armada, and you have a Kickstarter that's going on right now uh, called Lovecraft-esque. Now, I have to ask you, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I get that it's a play on Eat, Pray, Love, and so love and craft. So I don't know what an esque is. What, what's going on? Lovecraft-esque is actually not based on Eat, Pray, Love, um, although that is a great idea for another Kickstarter some other time. Um, Lovecraft-esque is based on the writing of H.P. Lovecraft, who is a horror writer from America. Oh, okay, all right. So, so it's based on H.P. Lovecraft stuff. So what inspired you? Is it the page-long sentences, the densely packed descriptive text, or the depressing cosmic nihilism? Yes, all of those things. Oh, fantastic. All right, great. So uh, so I understand that, that Lovecraft, is. this is basically because Lovecraft's gone into law as like Lovecraft, Esquire, and Associates, right? That, that's what this game is? Almost. Um, what it's really about is that there's lots of fantastic games out there based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft, but they all center around the idea of a party of investigators going out and investigating a horror. When H.P. Lovecraft was writing his stories, he actually wrote stories about one single protagonist, as we like to call them, a witness, who basically just gets tormented throughout his story um, and then usually meets a pretty sticky end. And so we wanted to write a game which m sort of more closely um, mirrored that aspect of H.P. Lovecraft's work rather than using all of the fantastic monsters that he created and having investigators with shotguns blowing them up. Oh, but but you have rules for shotguns, don't you, Josh? Oh uh, well, uh, yeah. There, there there is a rule for shotguns. It's it's you describe the shotgun, and uh, you know there it is. That's that's kind of it. That that sounds overpowering, though, because the shotgun it does like is there's a double barrel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the I mean, it's a it's a GMless game, uh, and each of you takes turns playing the the main character. So it's kind of in everyone's interests for the for the shotgun to be both powerful and not too powerful. Ah, uh, now I understand that this had you you said GMless, and I understand it has cards instead of dice. Uh, this is a little weird I, for me. Yeah, um, I mean uh, the the cards are really about uh, shaping the story. So each player has a card which will allow them to do something in the fiction which is thematic for a Lovecraft story. It's not really like the way that dice work in other games. Um, the, in place of dice, you just have players making decisions. Oh, okay. So uh, you have one witness, just one player character, and then a bunch of GMs, is that, but, but it's GM. Wait, I'm, I'm confused. I'm, Becky, help me out. So how does this go? It is pretty confusing, um, but it's actually quite simple. So there's one character called the witness who is the protagonist of the story, and all of the players around the table rotate who plays that protagonist scene by scene. So in any given scene, you'll have one person playing the protagonist, you'll have one person narrating the scene that they're in, and then if you have more than two players, you have these characters called watchers, and their role is to sit back listen to what the narrator's saying, and then start amping up the horror. They'll just be dripping little bits of detail, little bits of explanation into each scene to kind of build up that layer upon layer of horrific detail that you get in Lovecraft stories. Oh, well, that, that sounds pretty cool. So, Becky, I understand that everybody writes on note cards because it's a story game. So everyone writes on note cards what they think is actually happening. Um, so how do you... Who, who wins that the badness is their badness? 
Ah, um, I have to say this is my absolute favourite bit of the game. It's called the leaping to conclusions mechanic. So bearing in mind that this is a mystery game, and in each scene you're producing clues, um, you're improvising clues as you go. But in a typical Lovecraft story, um, obviously there is a final horror, there is a big reveal about what's actually going on. Now what the leaping to conclusions mechanic does is every time a new clue gets introduced, everybody sits down and they scribble out what their theory is about what's really going on. And as the scenes develop, you can either scratch that theory and come up with a new one, or you can develop your theory in line with the clues. So your, the clues and the theory are tracking each other as you go. So when you get to the final scene, everybody's got some idea of what they could narrate as the final horror. Oh, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. You know, I, I, I tried inspectors once, and, and th there was no communication like that with, you know, here's this, what's going on, which way to go, and it, it, got, it got a little weird at the end. Everyone ended up eating pie at a diner, and that was, that was not quite as horrific. <laughs> so, Josh, I'm curious, you know, what you call it Lovecraft-esque instead of C Cthulhu. Why is that? Okay, so um, this isn't a game about copying Lovecraft stories. We don't have uh, Cthulhu or Deep Ones or any of the stuff you'd see in a, in a regular Lovecraft <coughs> story. You're, you're creating your own monsters that, that will feel like Lovecraft could have created them. Oh, okay. That, that makes some sense. And it probably saves you from having to pay some copyright to some law firm in... Where, where he's an American, so... Well, Lovecraft is actually out of copyright, so, you know, go ahead, write as many uh, Lovecraft games as you want. It's it's a free-for-all. In, in, in actuality, I think everyone has written all the the Cthulhu games they, they can. Yeah, that's pretty much true. Yeah. You've got this game, and it's Lovecraft-esque, but then, you know, there's a text about about the race and, and H.P. Lovecraft, and, and then you're talking about the mental health and that H.P. Lovecraft. I'm curious, you know, if you don't want the Cthulhu stuff and, and some of the you got to apologize for some of the... Why, why is it about specifically... Cause couldn't you call it just, like, spooky campfire stories? I'm curious. <laughs> uh, Lovecraft obviously had some problems, um, part of which was down to the time he was writing and part of which was just down to the fact that he was a, a massive bigot, even for the age that he was living in and um, you know but but I don't think that takes away from the fact that um, he had these amazing ideas about a world where uh, human life is is really uh, unusual in the cosmos and in the wider cosmos uh, uh, is, is totally hostile to humans is filled with with horrors which might lurk in any corner um, that's kind of the, the, the nub of what we're going for with Lovecraft Desk. Um, so that's that's why Lovecraft. Can I can I add something to that? You may add something to that, Becky. Go. Thank you. <laughs> um, I really love the rhythm of H.P. Lovecraft stories. So what I like is that he very slowly builds up layer upon layer of detail which becomes ever more odd and ever more unusual and ever more horrific but it happens really slowly across the whole of the story so you get this kind of sense of creeping horror so unlike a Hollywood movie where you kind of you get like a little shock um, when a cat jumps out at somebody and the music's all spooky and then you'll have another 15 minutes and then you might have another shock um, Lovecraft has this very kind of different trajectory of how he builds up his horror and he's not the only one who did that um, but it's very much kind of a signature of his. Uh, and that's what I really love about it, which I think is missing from a lot of modern horror. Oh, wow. Yeah, These are two great... Oh, Josh, go, go. You got more? I agree with that. And, I mean, uh, Becky's so good at explaining this stuff. Um, you know, you can see why she's in charge of our communications. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I thought... I, I like your chair, though, Josh. You have a nice chair. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's a good chair. All right. Well, enough, enough of that seriousness, because I have a serious question for the two of you. Are you ready for a serious question? Absolutely. I'll all see. Right. Okay, all right. This, this one's hard. All right. If you, if you need paper to work out the math, that's okay. I will edit that out. All right. Would you rather be Cthulhu or 
near of that 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 tap. I'm just reading. I don't. I don't know that name. Nyarla. I don't think you can say the name without being destroyed, right? Isn't it one of those names? All right. So who do you want to be, Cthulhu or Nyarla that tap? Becky. Ah, uh, Cthulhu. I want to be able to give people visions in their dreams. That's an awesome power. Nice. Nice. Okay. And Josh. No, I don't agree with that. Cthulhu is like stuck at the bottom of the ocean, asleep until something happens to wake him up. That doesn't sound like a good deal to me. I want to be in the hour third tap. Oh man! See, Josh, Josh got it right. Good, good job, Josh. Sorry, Becky. But yeah, yeah you, you're like asleep, giving people dreams, but you're sleeping. Yeah, Niala Thotep. That's that's the way to go. But nice try, Becky. <laughs> oh man! Well, I gotta tell you, I'm so excited that you guys have already met your stretch goal, and you got. You, I'm sorry, you met your goal and uh, the, the thing so that it's happening. And now you got stretch goals to unlock, and I wish you the best of luck. This is fantastic. Thank you both for so, so much for being on. Thank you so much, Dr. Tom. Yes, thank you for inviting us. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show And we hope that you liked what you saw, yo But if it was a big waste of your time Well, it's free, so that's not a crime but if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime. <laughs>